What's up guys and gals, and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. It's time for us to play a little bit more Porsche. You guys seem to be enjoying it. I've been looking forward to this game for a really, really long time. If you wanted a more extended playthrough, definitely check out my Twitch channel. Twitch TV slash Splattercat Gaming, where we're about 12, 13 hours into the game. But strangely enough, it hasn't stopped me from playing this profile either. I just want to play the game. I've been waiting so long for it. And I've been depriving myself of all the patches so that I can play it all at once when it comes out. And so I'm really, really stoked to be here. Uh, we got a mission to make some copper blades. We got a mission to make a bridgehead. We have our grinder over here, which is pretty good. Now, uh, we went down into the dungeon in the previous episodes and got that done. So that should be taken care of. I'm going to need a couple of these guys right here. So we might as well just make those right now. So we'll make the copper blades real fast. Oh, I have two. Oh, never mind. I was going to say, I thought I had two cutters. We are going to need another cutter. We are. We're 100% going to need another cutter. But we probably want to wait until... We probably want to wait until our yard is a little bit larger. It'd probably help out a little bit. We also need to, like, focus on the task of making money. And in my opinion, the easiest way to do that is fishing. In the early game, fishing can stack you up with a couple of thousand galls pretty quickly. And right now, we're looking a little bit broke. These guys are worth like 60 apiece. These guys are worth like 75 apiece. Unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of money left, but I've got a plan. We don't have any bait either. Now, you can gather the bait from the little bushes that are around if you wanted to get up to your elbows and just like ivy grease. But I'm not really in the mood for that right now. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go to the store. And we're going to buy up this bait. I find that's the easiest way to just long-term have enough. Bait only costs like one gall, if I remember correctly. And so I would stock up on bait just so you aren't constantly waiting for bushes to respawn so that you can get more. Uh, you can get it off this vendor right here. Oh, they're three bucks a piece. Weak. All right. Well, th 23 bait's going to be enough for us to make money anyways. I could sell off some of the fish while we were here, but meh. No biggie. No harm, no foul. Let's head on over. Oh, there's two fishing spots down on the river that way. You can pick between the two. One of them is easier, but the fish aren't worth quite as much. One of them's harder, but the fish are worth a lot more. And it's up to you how you want to do it. I actually personally believe that the easier fish are more cost effective. It does cut into your profits from your worms or whatever, but all you really got to do is get some of the frogfish. Like, if you get, like, out of 25 casts, you get, like, 15 frogfish... Yeah, you've already made like a thousand galls, so it's not that big of a deal. However, there are high margin fish all the way down there over by the river's mouth right there where the waterfall is. If you go all the way over there, there are fish that are worth like 300, 400 galls apiece, but they take a lot longer to reel in. I haven't really run the timing on it to figure out what's more efficient or what's less efficient, but I can tell you there it is. I was going to say, where's my fishy spot at? I'm trying to be over here and be a fishing man. I'm trying to be a fishing man. I just want to be up on the ocean. There we go. So we got ourselves another catfish over here. Got him. And I'm just going to fish it on out. You know, I'll get back to you once I've got our spoils of fishy combat over here. But I don't think you want to sit here for 25 casts. That doesn't seem like an applicable usage of my footage time. You guys only get like 25, 30 minutes of splatter per go. So I'll see you once I'm done fishing. I suppose since we're sitting over here catching catfish, or catfish, I don't know why I said catfish. Sometimes things don't enunciate properly when you're in the midst of an episode, okay? Sometimes the words just don't come out the way that you want them to. I think we can all empathize there. Sometimes, like, you want to say something, but it just doesn't come out the right way. But anyways, in real life, you can actually, catfish is a mighty fine meal. That's a real good meal. Not a lot of catfish around where I live. You do get them sometimes, but catfish are not crazy common where I'm at. Usually you get German brown, you get trout, and you get, like, salmon where I'm at. And so anyways, there is a method for catching catfish, which has been handed down in Appalachian families for a long time called noodling. If you ain't never heard of noodling before, it's where you go and you find a pond, and catfish like to get in these big holes that are along the bank. And so along the riverbank, there'll be like these big giant holes and catfish like to go in there. And what you do, and these are big catfish, all right. I don't want to, I don't want to lie to you about noodling. These are big catfish. These are catfish like the size of your arm. These are big catfish. And what you can do is you can wrap your hand in duct tape and your forearm in duct tape. And then you stick your arm in the hole and you wiggle it around. And a big old catfish will clamp down on it. And then you just pull that bastard out with the raw might of manliness. And that's that's called noodling. It's a real thing. Go look it up. 
It was passed down to me the same way it was passed down to my father's father's father's. Noodling. The old south way of catching a fish. It requires duct tape, though, like all good plans. Uh, we have a meeting tonight at 1900 sharp. Not 1900 flat. That's completely and totally the wrong note to start off on. So don't even try there. But let's go sell these fish. Uh, my haul was not that great. We did get a necklace, though, which is pretty cool. Necklace will give us plus five to attack, and it actually goes on our character. Somehow we've managed to actually look even more hipstery than we looked previously. But I'm hoping we can make a nice little grip of cash right here before anything else happens. Tonight, also, the meetings that are on Sundays are a really good opportunity because everybody in town is in front of the town uh, in front of the town square. Uh, you can find anybody that you need for a quest during those meetings. And so if you're having trouble finding somebody in town, uh, find them during a town meeting. Unfortunately, the market's a little low right now. It's okay, though. Oh, he doesn't have enough money. All right, well, I mean, we got our first thousand galls right there, so I'll take it. There we go. We got 1,500 galls. Looking good. That should be enough money to last us for a little while. It's not going to be a perfect amount of cash, but it is an amount. Uh, let's go grab the copper blades real fast. I also wanted to grab a commission while I'm here. You always want to make sure you're working on commissions because your workshop has a ranking. And as your workshop ranks up, you get access to, like, more stuff. And that's basically, like, how you advance through the game. And so it's very easy to get caught up on, like, side quests. Oh, it's a weekend. Never mind. I can't get commissions. But it's easy to get caught up on side quests and forget about just doing your normal commissions. But realistically, you should be doing a commission every single day. It provides you with cash flow that doesn't require grinding. It also, unless you use the angle grinder, and then it does require grinding. But that's literal grinding, not, like, metaphorical video game grinding. So there's our blades right there. We've got those for Polly. We'll go ahead and take those back on over to him. My other suggestion would be that we make a few more blades. So there we go. If there's anything else I can work on as well, I'd like to do that. Yeah, like, oh, the fuel is depleted. Okay, do I not have any power stones? I must not, because it will pull the power stones from your inventory in here. If you have them. Like, it already pulled the marble out. Now, we do have a rusty pipe right there. We can use that as a weapon. Got a joystick. What else do I have around here? I've also got a defense talisman. Kind of feel like we should equip that, too. Just so we get that extra plus five, plus five. Yeah, I actually think it might be a better idea. After we turn things into poly, we may want to go back into the mine and spend a little bit more time. So I kind of want to upgrade my tools in this episode or the next episode, although I think we have to upgrade to a level 2 workbench in order to get that done effectively. I don't think we're going to have time to go see. We'll get Polly tonight at the town meeting. Instead, what we'll do is we'll go mine right now to get as much copper and tin as we possibly can. And then I also need to chop trees, dude. We got all kinds of problems right now. I'm pretty much out of everything at the moment. Oh, well. Oh, well. I'm struggling to live right now. Please give me likes, internet. That's how you get likes on the internet. You make some vague joke about not being able to take care of yourself and also vaguely being nihilistic about the outcomes of your life and then just watch the up thumbs flow in. That's how you do it right there. That's how you do it. This is coming from a master internet influencer. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Let me just grab some of these goodies down here. I'm not too interested in digging around for like more relics or anything else like that. We've only got a little bit of energy left anyways. I think I may not be able to chop trees today either. That's the big bummer. Ah, well. Like, it was a productive day. Like, any day that you burn through all of your energy in Portia is a day well spent. So I don't feel that bad about it, but I kind of wish we still had some energy left over to chop down trees because all of our forges don't have fuel and I wanted them to kind of like be burning all night. All night long, all night, all night long, oh yeah. Yeah, well, let's go talk to Polly. We got nothing else going on right now, so we might as well go hit him up. Get our money for the saw blades. Also increase our reputation with him. Do not underestimate the reputation grind in this game. It takes a lot of reputation. Get started early. I'm telling you, get started early with your rep farming. Don't miss an opportunity to make somebody love you because, frankly, it takes a lot of effort. There we go. So we got 10 with him and then $210 right there. 338 galls with the fish that we sold. Not bad. Now I'm just running around town with a rusty pipe waiting to go strike gangsta on somebody. Just bow. Gangsta. Gangsta. See, this dude's practicing gangstering over here, too. 
Alright, well, we got the town meeting right now, so... What's up with... The exclamation point over here? The farmer. Oh, is that for the quest where I gotta do the... Let me go to my missions log real fast. Is that for the quest that... Oh, we don't even have that quest yet. Okay. I also gotta meet Dr. Zhu, but he should be over here in just a minute. Ah, welcome. If you're in need of house or workshop upgrades, this is the place to be. All you need to do is select a plan from the catalog book in our company. There you go. And it's time for the meeting to start. So let's get all settled in here. Apparently everybody else is just not coming to the meeting today. Mm -mm. It's going to be a limited town meeting. Ah well. That didn't feel very warm. I'm not feeling incredibly You're welcomed. You're a new person. You just inherited that workshop outside of town, right? Ah, sorry. Where are the manners? I'm Sonia. Hi, Sonia. How are you? It's good to meet you. We're out of energy for the day, so frankly, I'm going to do what I do when faced with all kinds of problems in life. I'm just going to go to bed. It's never backfired on me yet. Life gives you lemons, you go to bed and pretend like they don't exist until it snowballs into a massive issue that can no longer be avoided. That's how I live my life. Don't judge me, Nerdcastle. Don't judge me. That's how I live my life. Alright, off to bed we go. Another day down in the world of Portaya. Alright, so we got things to accomplish today. We have utterly no wood right now, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is wage a one-man intifada against nature over here and just, like, annihilate trees until we get what we want. So there we go. Intifada engaged. I don't know if we can chop down these guys right here. Yeah, with the stone axe. I was gonna say, I'm almost positive we cannot. Yeah. We're probably just gonna have to stick to, like, smaller bushes and things like that. If nothing else, it's a good opportunity for us to... Did I use my skill points, by the way? Skill points? Did I... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Skill points. Skill points! Apparently, I have not been using my skill points. Uh, we can have double drops right there. We can increase our endurance. We can increase our stamina. I think that's a good play for right now. We don't have a lot of furniture or anything else like that. So increasing the old stamina is probably... No wonder my stamina is going away so fast. I was going to say, like, it feels like my stamina is dropping off at, like, an absurd rate right now. And it makes a lot of sense why it felt that way, because I forgot to put in my skill points. This will also give us a butt ton of plant fiber, which we're going to need for later. Not so much right now, but having a good grip of it will be helpful once we get a little bit further into the game, just so that we don't have to stop off and chop more trees when we don't want to. Good. We're down to one stamina per chop now. That'll definitely help us conserve some energy over the course of the day. I gotta refill all of my forges, though, unfortunately, so we're gonna need a lot of wood. I'm gonna go over here. You're not gonna chop that from right there, are you? Yeah, you gotta inch forward ever so slightly more. Game's being a stickler with me right now. We got mail? Man, imagine getting snail mail that's not a bill. From Dawa. I'm the Porsche Tree Farm. Last time we had blew down some fencing. It's closed. We need five wooden boards. Done. Can do that. The annual Porsche Fishing Day is happening on Friday and Saturday. If you're interested in participating, bring your patience and a fishing rod and register at the event. Good. We'll do that too. We'll see if we can win. I enjoy the little events in this game like Christmas and all that kind of stuff. They have like all these fun little festivals you can go to just like in Stardew Valley. You can win some like unique prizes that you can only get on those days of the year too. So you'll want to look out for those if you're trying to get like the special treasures or like the special outfits or the special furniture. All that kind of stuff. Alright, so a few more trees and I think I will be happy with what we've accomplished today. Frankly, the city should probably be paying us for doing all this landscaping and getting rid of all the scrub brush. Hopefully none of this is, like, protected tree species or anything. If it is, then, well, I might have made a miscalculation, but that's the way life goes sometimes. Sometimes you make a wrong call. Alright, so we're looking good right there. I think we have enough wood to run us for at least a couple more days of smelting, which is good, because we have a lot of smelting to do. You know, we gotta smelt it before we can dealt it. And so let's jump on over this fence. And we'll get ourselves all set up with the things that we need in order to keep ourselves productive. Crafting's done right there. Fuel's depleted over here. Okay. 
make more copper bars, please. I like to keep my copper and my bronze basically even when I play this game. You can see how many you have in your inventory from the number right there. And so I like to keep copper and bronze pretty much on an even keel uh, because you're going to need both. Even like well into the game, some things are going to require a lot of copper and some things are going to require a lot of bronze and some are going to require a lot of both. And so it just kind of depends. Just keep a lot in stock. You won't regret it. Hey, neighbor. Do you have a minute? I've been meaning to talk to you. I just got a new craft recipe all the way from Highwind. It's a box that can be used to cultivate crops. People in Highwind have been using it for a while now, and supposedly it's great. Can you build it and test it out for me? If it works as advertised, I'll order a few more off of you. How about it? Alright, so we got a quest to build some planter boxes as well. Not the hardest quest. Should be able to do. It's actually more time consuming than anything else because you got to plant the crops and wait for them to grow before the quest will finally be over. I think I finally got around to it on like day 40 in my stream playthrough. It took forever. But yeah, you should definitely swing through the stream. Like I've been, I've been developing a stream for like six years now. And if you wanted Splattercat uncut in the late of the night, then oof, baby, do I have you covered. Uh, let's see here. I need power stones. So I'm a thinking that it's probably a good idea for me to start looking for relics here. Let's see what we can find today. So basically, if you want to find relics, all you got to do is hit the F key. It'll open up your relic scanner. Once your relic scanner is open, you just look for one, mark it, and then dig for it. The deeper down you are, the better. I do not have space in my inventory. Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, I cleared out what space I could, but unfortunately, I didn't think about this before I came here. There is a way around that. You can't expand the size of your inventory just by paying money. It's actually one of the earlier upgrades that I would probably recommend most, is just getting your inventory up to maximum space. It'll save you time. What is that right there? A leather sofa. Pretty sure the leather sofa gives us stamina, so we'll put that in our house, and I think that'll probably be a really helpful piece of equipment. Let's dig for that relic over there. That one looks like a winner in my opinion. I bet it's gonna be the one that I need, but frankly right now I haven't been doing a whole lot of digging, and so that's why we're low on power stones and all that other stuff we need to make our workbenches function. So, you know, oh, it's a piece of a monument. Also, this dungeon has not really been that great for giving us the things that we need. We've gotten a lot of monument pieces, and a lot of little like random things, but hey, there we go, we got some power stones. Oh, yes! We also got some more old parts. Those two power stones are going to last us a couple of days. Let me... What's it going to cost me? 400 galls? Do it. We've got the money. 600 galls? Do it. We've got the money. Inventory management in this game can be a little bit of a chore. I know I've talked about this when I'm streaming. I don't know if I've talked about it on the YouTube channel. I don't like video game inventories. I'll be honest with you. I firmly believe that games should just allow you to carry as much stuff as you want unless it's like a roguelike where scarcity of supply has a function. If it's a crafting game or whatever though where like you're expected to have a million different parts to do a million different crafts, just let the player carry everything in their inventory all at once in like a text menu basically. Like one of my favorite games of all time is Gothic. The reason I like Gothic so much is in Gothic there's no weight and there's no inventory limit. You can carry everything you want on you at a time. In Gothic, I've been carrying around 900 suits of plate mail all at once. Like a thousand, like halberds, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, the game lets you get away with it and I love that. I love it. Then again, I'm not a fan of inventory management. Some people are fans of inventory management. They find that to be fun, not me. Having to run back to base every eight seconds in order to drop stuff in a chest, or just like move things around, not my cup of tea. Not my cup of tea. So we got a couple of power stones. I'd like to get a few more while we're here. I know that like spending all day every day in the mine digging is probably the not most, or it's probably not the most engaging thing. But it gives us really good XP. Bit of a bummer in the mine today. We actually did not get like anything that was even vaguely useful. I dug all day and all I got was these like little relic pieces right here. So what you can do with the relic pieces, you can take them to the research center and you can reassemble them and they'll give you pieces of furniture for your house that have like awesome bonuses. Like the bonuses are cool and everything. And also if you put them in a place where other citizens can see them like in your front yard. 
So, like, let's say that you get, like, a monument, or you get, like, a statue of a horse, or you get, like, a giant scientific, like, back the tank or whatever. If you put it in your front yard, people walking by will see it, and it will just passively give you, like, plus 40 points with them to their relationship. So, like, they are useful, but what I needed right now was power stones, and unfortunately I've been left wanting. And right now... I just need power stones, that's all that I want. It's a bummer to spend an entire day digging and I think get like one power stone. How many did I get? Five. Okay, five is doable. Five is enough for like the rest of the week. It'll probably be okay. Let me grab a commission real fast too, before we run off and do anything else. And we've got a commission for five wooden storages. We've got five rope. And we've got two basic skivers. That's a pretty hefty commission. I think we could do that one. Two skivers? Yeah, I think we could do that. I mean, I try to take the ones that pay me more money. Like, the ones that pay you more money tend to take a lot more materials, too. But I'm not against it. Kitty! Kitty just splashing around in a puddle. Just being a kitty. How about the planter boxes? Haven't done it yet. I'll be honest with you. Haven't done it yet. Does that pig have saddlebags? This game was, I think, made in China, and so I think pigs are good luck in China, right? I'm pretty sure pigs are good luck in China. I will refuel that right there. And we need boards for many different reasons. But the main reason is that we just need more boards. Uh, let's see where the skivers are. So for the skivers, we need bronze pipes, and that's actually not that hard. Two bronze pipes and a marble plank. All right. Did I ever cut those? Well, here, make the make the bronze pipes first, and then I think what I'm gonna do is we're actually gonna keep our storage out here, and there's a reason for that. It's kind of a quick little shortcut that a lot of players might not be aware of, but if you have a chest that's outside. You don't need to go inside anymore to access your items because you can cycle through all of your chests from right there. And so, like, you can now interact with your inventory from outside the house, which does not, look, like, seem like that big of a thing, but it actually is. It's pretty helpful. So we've got the thinking can. I've got ma monster toy piece. I've got horse one, horse four, or horse two, horse four, monument three. Yeah, we've picked up a lot of, like, garbage items, unfortunately. Like, unless you have, like, all of these, they're not helpful right now. So, like, I wish that they were, but they just aren't, all right? They just aren't. They're disappointing to me. Then I think I can dump all of this stuff. Yeah, you know, just throw it wherever. The game will craft out of our inventory, so it doesn't really matter if we put things in there. I'm going to call this one, we can actually rename it too, like so. I'm going to call this one Relics. I'm going to call this one, this is probably like my junk drawer. Oh, we do have Galloping Horse 3, hold on, wait, what? Hold up, hold up. So we got everything but Galloping Horse 1. So we need Galloping Horse 1, and then we can assemble this using data disks. That's the other part, is we need to start using our data disks too. If we use our data disk, we can start unlocking new crafting locations, which I think is a really good idea. Civil Cutter is going to be used up until, like, tomorrow. Let's go gather some more marble real fast. I think marble is probably something we're going to need some more of. Like, not right this second, but I'd rather, like, preempt the problem at the pass and get the marble together right now than need it later and just be like, Oh, no, I need marble. It'll just be easier. I forget what I need to upgrade our workbench to level 2 as well so that we can get the bronze tools. Because bronze tools are the point at which we're, like, stamina is no longer an issue in this game. There is a treasure chest back there. I don't know if we can get after it. I think you need bronze tools in order to get this guy right here. I think. Or I can just open that from right there. Never mind. I'll just open it from right there and take somebody's pocket change. 100 bucks and a treasure chest on the side of the road. Definitely not the best investing scheme to just leave your treasures on the side of the road. Well, you know, I'm not going to turn down a good thing. When I used to be a runner, I used to find money all the time. I used to run like three to five miles a day. And I used to find money on the ground like frequently, like weirdly frequently. And I'm not talking about like nickels and quarters and stuff. I'm talking about like $10 bills. 
Like, I've probably made like 200 bucks in the last couple of years as a runner. Just running. People drop money. It helps that my run took me past a high school and an elementary school while I was running. And so I think that's what it is, is people's lunch money or whatever just falls out of their pocket and then like hours later it's still just like sitting there in a bush. Or like sitting there like, you know, in a bunch of tan bark on the side of the road. Like, I don't know. I found fives, tens, twenties, I found all kinds of stuff on the side of the road. And there you go. Take up running. It's good for your health and you might find someone's lunch money. My name is Splattercat. I will see you all later. This is my time at Porsche. We're out of time for right now. Hi to everybody. Take care. Get the game down below. Support the developers and... That's all I got for you.